This is Geometry Chapter 13, Section 1, in which we will study how we represent sample spaces. Okay. What we're going to be working with in this chapter is a lot of probability, and we're going to look at how we connect probability with geometric concepts. But before we do that, we need to define a few things. For example, an experiment is some situation involving chance that leads to results. Things like flipping a coin, rolling a die, drawing a card from a deck. Okay, those kinds of things would be experiments because you get results from it. You get heads or tails. You get the four of clubs. You get results there. And those results are called outcomes. An event is one or more of the possible outcomes. So if I'm, for example, drawing a card from a deck and I win the money if I draw a heart or a four, the event would be getting either a heart or a four. Okay. And the main thing we're going to be working with here is making what's called the sample space all the possibilities that could happen, okay, regardless of how likely they are to happen. We're looking at everything that could possibly happen. So let's make a couple of sample spaces here. We have an experiment in which we're going to flip a coin three times, and we need to list out the sample space. Okay, usually we like to make tree diagrams for these, at least while they're still smallish. So we have our coin, and we're going to flip it the first time. Either I'm going to get heads, or I'm going to get tails. Okay. Unless, of course, I'm playing with a two-headed coin, but that's not fair. So we'll just stick to a regular coin. So we have a heads or a tails. That was flip one. Now, regardless of what we got in flip one, when we flip it again, we'll still either get heads or tails. So if we got heads the first time, we could get either one. And if we got tails the first time, we could still get either one. And I'll bet you can guess what's under this third box. Because we're going to flip again, and we'll either get a heads or a tails, whether we got heads here or tails here whether we got heads or tails back here, the coin is still going to go heads or tails. So our sample space is all these possible outcomes. We could get heads, heads, and then heads again. We could get heads, heads, and then tails. Heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. Or tails, tails, tails. Having the tree helps us organize our information so that we can generate our outcomes. But this in blue here is the sample space. That's all the possibilities. If you just give me the tree, that's going to be okay. Later on, we're going to be doing things where you need to see it in this form so you can count things. But for now, if you just do the tree, that's fine. Okay. In this situation, we have a small MP3 player that's available either with a 4 gig or an 8 gig hard drive. And for you stylish folks out there, you can get it in red, purple, blue, or green. And you can get it with a clip, or you can get it with a dock, and or you could get it, you could get both, you could get one or the other, you could get neither. Those are options that are up to you. So they want us to come up with a sample space for this. Now, you'll notice on your note sheet, you'll notice here on the screen, I didn't put a box over it because I didn't want you to have to take a lot of time to write all this out. But I want to show you how I got the information. Okay. I could have either a 4 gig or an 8 gig. Everything in the top part up here is 4 gig, and everything in the bottom is 8 gig. 
Now, once I decide I'm going to have a 4 gig, I could have reds or purples or blues or greens. And the same thing with the 8. <clears throat> now, if I get a 4 with red, I could get a clip and I could get a dock. Or I could get a clip without a dock. Or I could go no clip but give me a dock. Or I could go neither. No clip and no dock. And I can do that with the purple one as well, and with the blue one, and with the green one. And everything that we set up here also applies to choosing an 8 gig. Okay, we could get 8 with each color, and we could get both clip and dock. We could just get clip, just get dock, or take neither one for each color. So we end up with 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 4, 32 possible things in the sample space. We could have done this with a tree, but one, my screen is only so big, and two, it gets really cumbersome when you get this many options going on. So sometimes making a list like this is easier than drawing the tree. It's kind of going to leave that up to you, which way, whichever way you want to go. Now this last thing that we just did is called a multi-stage experiment because you have multiple stages of choices going on, multiple things happening. And as you see, when you start adding more and more possibilities, more and more choices, your sample space gets big in a hurry. So listing the whole thing may not be the best option. If all they're asking for is how many outcomes are there, not asking us to list them, just how many, then we can use what's called the fundamental counting principle. And the fundamental counting principle looks really complex at first, but then it will make perfect sense to you. Okay. If we have a multi-stage experiment, we have multiple things happening, and you have A possibilities for what could happen in the first place, and then B possibilities in the second, and then C in the third, and so forth, then the number of possible total outcomes would be A times B times C times D. If you only have three things, obviously you would just do A times B times C. If you had eight things, you would have times E times F times G times H. I mean, you would keep using as many points as you needed. But that's the idea of the fundamental counting principle. Now, what we're going to do is find some numbers of outcomes here. So let's consider the MP3 player that we had back there. We know we can look on our note sheet here and we can count them. We see there's 32. But let's see how we could get there easily. The first choice, we have two choices, either a 4 gig or an 8 gig. In the second stage, we have four choices of color. In the third stage, we had two choices, take a, die, uh, a clip or don't take a clip. And in the fourth stage, we had the same thing, take a dock or don't take a dock. So we had two choices first, times four for the, for the colors, times two for the clip, times two for the dock, gives us the 32 possibilities that we got before. Okay. How do you know whether to do it the counting principle way or the listing way? It depends on what they ask. If they ask, name the possibilities, then you have to list them out. If they say how many or find the number of, then you can just do this. So it kind of, you have to read, you have to depend on what it says. All right. Let's try another one here. We've got a standard six-sided die that we're going to roll four times. Well, each time I roll, I have six choices. I have one through six on the first one, one through six on the second one, third and fourth. Multiply all that together, and we get 1,296. Okay. One more here. And this one gets a little bit tricky because people miss something here. 
We have a pair of shoes available, and here's the key, sizes 5 through 11. And they come in red, navy, brown, or black. You can get leather or suede, and they come in three different widths. Okay, We're looking for how many outcomes there are. Now here's where people make the mistake, is that when they try to figure out how many possibilities there are for sizes 5 through 11, people just look, go on autopilot, they subtract, they say there's six choices. But there's not six choices. You could get size 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. You can't see it, but I was just counting my fingers. So I've got seven choices there, not just six. I know in theory you could have half sizes, but we're going to simplify our lives and just go with whole number sizes. So we have seven choices here times four choices for the colors, times two choices for the material, times three choices for the width, gives us 168. So making sample spaces, pretty good stuff there. Fundamental counting principle is one way to go, and your tree charts, tree diagrams, or your listing is a good way to go if you need to have all of the options. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.